Welcome everybody. I'm Eleanor Kelly, Councilwoman here in Montevideo. On behalf of Mayor and Council, we welcome you today. Each year, we come together as a community to remember the men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice protecting our freedom. Those that we remember today paid the price for that freedom. We must never forget that we are the home of the free because of the brave. In deep gratitude, we honor today the heroes who walk among us. We want to acknowledge and congratulate the members of VFW Post 3324 of Runnymede for being recognized by the National Organization of Veterans of Foreign Affairs as the number one post in the nation. In the past year, they donated over $96,000 and over 5,000 hours of community service in, in service to our veterans and their families. July, Commander Sampolsky will be traveling to Charlotte to accept the national award. They also just received the most poppies award sold. 18,000 poppies were sold. $18,000 was given to them in donation. They are the top post in New Jersey. truly exemplifies the words of President Harry Truman. America was not built on fear. America was built on courage, on imagination, and the unbeatable determination to do the job at hand. Congratulations to VFW Post 3324. VFW Post 3324, please present the colors. Invocation by Pastor Andy. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, today we come together in thanksgiving for all those who have served our country. Today we specifically remember those who have fallen on the battlefield or given their lives in service in one way or another. We must never forget that their sacrifice is not an individual sacrifice. Their sacrifice is felt by parents, children, spouses, friends, and comrades in arms. And now as we gather to remember those who have lost their lives but have given their best for our country, we ask that you not only bless them and keep them, but you'll also keep us mindful to give thanks for their sacrifice and to also give great appreciation and thanks for those who have stood beside them, all of our veterans. May we always remember the cost of freedom has a high price, but it comes because there are those who are willing to pay that price and the sacrifice that they and everyone surrounding them are willing to make. In the name, name and power of your Son, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. The Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we will have the national anthem sung by Serena Garcia, a youth member of mayor and council and she is a marvelous young songstress. Welcome Serena. Whose 
Echo stripes, hemorrhoid stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch, were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets rang the bombs bursting. Thank you, VFW Post 3324. I'd like to introduce now Mayor Capatis. I just want to welcome everyone to Run of Me. Uh, we appreciate, appreciate all of you being here today. Uh, you honor us, you honor those who have served and those who have fallen. Uh, we're, we're honored tonight to have Mr. Ryan here. At this moment, I'm going to introduce uh, the members of our council and our distinguished guests. Starting off with our Congressman Donald Norcross, <laughs> Freeholder Bill Bowen, <laughs> Council President Patty Passio, who puts this together. And we have to thank her for all this. We have uh, Councilman Michael Root. Councilman Bob Farrell, Councilman John Ranieri, the newest member, Councilman Craig Robinson. And it's also my privilege to introduce our, and oh, how did I forget, Councilwoman Eleanor Kelly to introduce me. Thank you. And then Youth Mayor and Council. Here we have our students. Please stand up. Alex Ray. Krista Miller, Emily Mule, Gianna Maldonado, and Serena, who sung for us. Thank all of for being here. At this time, I want to turn it over to our congressman. He has a special, uh, special, it's a special day today. So we're going to let him uh, speak to all of you. And once again, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Mayor Aaron. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Run of Me always does a terrific job, and I, I look over to Bill Moen, who uh, we've known each other, worked together for a half dozen years now, and what a great, great... I'm trying to think of the word that I want to use, but the best in the United States of America for VFW. That is absolutely incredible, given how many are going on. And it's all based on service, which is in many ways why we're here today. Decoration Day, as my mother, who was raised in Tennessee, as they called it, we know it as Memorial Day. It is not Veterans Day. This isn't a celebration. This is about reflection for those who are no longer with us. When we look around, and I had the opportunity on Thursday to go with the congressional delegation over to Arlington Cemetery, the back lawn of General Lee's, which was created because D.C. did not have enough graveyards for those who were dying in the Civil War. There are now 624 acres, over 400,000 markers, a remarkable place. 
But we happen to go to section 60. Some of you know what that means. Some of you have seen it on TV. It's where the most recent fighters from Iraq, Afghanistan are laid to rest. And while I was there, I happened to have the opportunity to go see David Tapper's final resting space. David Tapper was a SEAL for over 13 years, grew up right here in Camden County, and was killed in Afghanistan almost a decade ago. And when I was in Afghanistan, probably about six months ago, inside what they call the green zone where we have our base, there's a room that they call the Telebar. It's a play on the Taliban. It's where our warfighters go to try to relax for a few moments. And that entire room, from floor to ceiling, across the ceiling, for over a decade, our warfighters have been writing messages on those walls. Some are humorous, some are sad, some are profound. And I happened to notice, out of the corner of my eye, I went over and there was David Tapper's writings. I took a picture of that, and uh, when we left Afghanistan, General Campbell presented our delegation an American flag that flew over top of our base. I came back and called Judy, who still lives in the area, and went over and presented that flag to her and showed her the picture to say they didn't forget. We didn't forget. See, he grew up right here in Camden County. Five sisters, he was the only boy. Now you know how he became a SEAL. He had to be tough. But he left behind a wife and four children. 13 years a SEAL. That's a remarkable amount of time in that capacity. But there are 400,000 stories right there in Arlington and almost a million four throughout our country who have given that ultimate price. It is very difficult and it takes a tremendous amount of courage to stop your life, to go to put the uniform on, and fight for your country. Those core values of service. At times, it even takes more courage to fight for the peace. The point I'm making here is sometimes we have to go to war. But war has a price, a very high price. And we have too many gold star families who are without their loved ones. I met with uh, Jack and Judith Young, who lost their child in Beirut in 1983, almost 32 years ago. His dad, to this day, can still not talk about it. That sense of loss. They're so proud of their children, but it's a void that's no longer there. So we take this very special day and just take a pause. Melinda Kane, who is a councilwoman in Cherry Hill, lost her son Jeremy back in uh, probably about five years ago now. And she said something that really made an impact on me. And I'll leave you with this. We just ask that people pause and reflect on the sacrifice our sons made and take time to honor that sacrifice. It is that simple, but it's so moving. So we come together today in this wonderful area of Camden County to take that moment to reflect on those who are not here. A missing mother, missing father, brother, sister. That's why we are so special. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Tom. We're going to do our presentation. Do you want to start off with the... As part of my uh, duties, honor, and responsibility, I go to many returning events of those warfighters who are throughout our country. 
when we reflect back on when I grew up and those returning vets were coming from Vietnam, it was a very different story. And that's why I'm so proud to see so many of those who served in Vietnam come out to those yellow ribbons. Now, I put together a congressional record, which will be etched in time, just to take a moment to talk about one. It says, I rise today to offer my sincere condolences and to honor the memory of Tom Obie O'Brien III running me. For his commitment, engagement, extraordinary self-sacrifice, exemplary service both as a Navy vet and a member of Warriors Watch Riders to the citizens of New Jersey and the United States. Big Teddy Bear, yes. Road in the cold, yes. I'm one of those fair weather riders that when it goes down to 30 degrees, I'm out of here. And he continued to ride because those returning home just don't come home in nice weather. And I can tell you, those returning vets were just so happy ecstatic to see that people are behind them and that's a stark contrast to where we were just a generation ago so mr speaker tom will o'brien iii dedicated his life to putting others before himself he served his country in the navy honored fellow veterans with warriors watch and was active in his community i joined with his family friends and all of South Jersey in honoring the life of this truly selfless, exceptional man. And I would ask his wife to come forward. So we're also here today to honor our VFW post 3324. Uh, would Mr. Sampolsky come up? Commander, are you available? It's a Runnymede VFW Post 3324 Men's Auxiliary, established June 1906. With appreciation for your years of dedicated service, we thank you. Presented to you, Runnymede Mayor Capados and Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to hear the President of the Men's Auxiliary, Mike Costello, please come up. And Bill Nolan Jr., the senior vice. Thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, we really don't deserve this. Uh, this is something we do for the community. Uh, Sammy uh, being the commander and me being the president of Men's Auxiliary, uh, we're here to help the veterans, the senior citizens, and everything we can do for this proud town that I live in called Rugby. We also have another plaque to, to commemorate and thank the Ladies Auxiliary from Rodney VFW Post 3324. Thank you very much. 
much for this award. We do what we do for those that did what they did for us, for our freedom, every day. Thank you. The BFW gets a lot of credit, um, deservedly so. But to our men's auxiliary, ladies' auxiliary, and VFW, we worked together as a team for what we did this year and the previous five, six years would have never been accomplished without the teamwork. You know the old saying I was taught a long time ago playing baseball and running me, there's no I in team. to say a little bit about the man that we're going to be honoring today. Um, happy man. A man who loved people. A man with commitment and devotion. A man who would do anything for anybody. That's what they remember about Tom. Tom was a graduate of Camden County Vocational Class of 1975. After high school, he entered into the U.S. Navy, serving his country. Thomas J. O'Brien III, lived in Runnymede, and also was a cyclist with the Warrior Watch Riders. They were a family of motorcyclists, always doing something for others, especially those who have served their country or their community. At least once a week, Tom rode in a motorcycle cavalcade, either to welcome a returning veteran in a funeral <laughs> procession for first responders or in other military-related honor parades in South Jersey and beyond. Today, the Warrior Watch Riders rode his wife, Evelyn, here to the memorial so that we can honor him. On March 26th, Tom was preparing to ride his three-wheeled motorcycle to Mays Landing to welcome home a fellow veteran. He was involved in an accident with a car in Haddon Heights. The next day, on March 27th, Easter Sunday, he passed away. He was to retire from his job at the U.S. Mint in 28 days, hoping to give more time to his devotion and commitments. Besides his commitment to the Warrior Watch Riders, Tom was a member of our Runnymede VFW Post 3324. Tom loved visiting homes of family and friends as Santa on Christmas Eve to entertain the children. Last year, Tom, along with the Warrior Watch Riders, led Runnymede's 4th of July parade. This year, they will lead again. You won't see Tom, but he will be there riding along side by side, as he will continue to do for all eternity. Rest in peace, Thomas J. O'Brien, Obi. And right now, we would like to present his wife with uh, a plaque. Evelyn, you can either sit there, we, we'll bring it to you. Thomas J. O'Brien III recognition of his outstanding service and dedication to his country and community. It takes a minute to find a special per a person, an hour to appreciate them, and a day to love them, but it takes an entire lifetime to forget them. You will forget, forever be a Warrior's Watch writer, presented this day to Ms. O'Brien. Today I was I was at four other events for Memorial Day and um, you know people come up to me and say oh, oh you're Bill Melvin from Runnymede and I say yeah and they say that VFW is awesome and uh, and uh, I'm honored to be uh, affiliated more so than anything else I think in my life uh, to be affiliated with the VFW because I know firsthand how much 
good work that they do every day and how many volunteers that are affiliated with that post that are here today and do God's work. They really do. So again, can, can you join me in giving the VFW another round of applause? Be brief. Um, I think the, the one thing I'd just like to convey uh, to you all this, this, this morning, afternoon, I, mean, I think it's afternoon now, um, is that uh, one of the greatest honors I have is, is serving on the Freeholder Board is to serve as the liaison to the Office of Veterans Affairs. And that represents 33,000 veterans in Camden County, who call Camden County home. Um, so I, I get to meet with them and, and ultimately represent them on the board and their values and their interests. And um, one of the things as we, as, as we look to try to com commemorate their legacy, um, one of the things that I'm most proud to report to you is that the, through the Camden County Office of Veterans Affairs and hundreds of volunteers, just like the folks that are in the audience today, uh, we flagged over 26,000 graves in Camden County this weekend uh, to preserve their memory in, in 30 different cemeteries. So to close, I just want to thank all of you as a hometown boy in Runnymede. This is the last event of the day, and uh, I, can, I can be honest in telling you that this is the biggest crowd I've seen today commemorating our fallen heroes. And again, I thank you for this opportunity, and I'm, I'm grateful to serve as your freeholder. Thank you very much. At this time, I would ask Commander Sampolsky to lead us at the procession to the memorial. go over um, I would like to know is um, Brian Kassam here Brian okay well Brian I, I thought we thought he was here but he is a hometown boy and um, we just wanted to wish him good health and great success uh, at his dreams of joining the elite community of the US Navy SEALs it becomes his reality next month so Brian if you're out there or your family's here we wish you the best Shout out to uh, Dylan Pierce. He just came back from Afghanistan. So Dylan, you can stand up.
present here is in solemn commemoration of all these men and expression of our faith.